Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. That I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Makandaram Brahim Jesentoro Bruhindara Brahalala. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, my brethren. Good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. Wherever you are in the world, the great grace of God and the mighty hand of power, a mighty hand of His Excellency, protect you, preserve you, keep you by the power of His might. And let the name of Christ be glorified forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Keep you, protect you, preserve you. The keeper of Israel will keep you. Amen. Father, we give you praise and thank you. We worship, we honor you. Until you alone be other glory. Daddy, you are highly lifted up. You are highly exalted. You are highly glorified. Let that glory be above all the earth. Have your divine and mighty, uplifted, excellent and gracious way. Have your holy way now, O God, and let thy name alone be magnified. Speak thy word. Let thy word come forth with life. Let thy word come back up with power. Oh, let thy word come forth with great grace and power. Let healing go. Let deliverance come forth. Let anointing come. Let unction come. Let solution to problem come as the word of God is going out now. For unto the Lord we are the glory. As his miraculous hand walk upon you. Unto God we are the glory forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you. It is well. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let's see what we can do between now and some minutes before we be rushing off another program we have by the divine grace of God. We're talking about presenting every man perfect before God. Presenting every man perfect before God. St. Paul said, Knowing the terror of God, we won't man. Knowing the anger of God. Knowing the destruction that is ahead. Knowing the tears and gnashing of teeth that will soon come. Oh, we won't man. A little this. God bless you. Prince Elijah, God bless you. Rita William, God bless you. Nasazi, God bless you. And all of you that are listening from far and near, God bless you. God bless you. I can see people from many parts of the world listening to the world. God the keeper will keep you. Knowing the terror of God will warn men. How far have we been going on evangelism? 
However, have we been going on warning people about destination, their final destination? I met a young man on Thursday. I started talking to him about Jesus. He said, I used to know you. You come to Lagos years ago. I used to know you when you come to Lagos, you preach the word of God to us and the word of life to all this and that. And I said, wonderful. I said, you know me. He said, yes, I know you. And he said, since I came back, this and this. I said, oh, now that God has blessed you. When you were in Lagos, you were suffering. Now God has blessed us. So a lot of achievement friend about you. Is it not high time? Is it not high time for you to say, oh, God, show me mercy. Oh, God, I want to be your child. I want to be yours and yours. I want to be forever and ever. That was what I told him. I said, is it not high time? Is it not your time for you to do that? Is it not time for you to say, oh, I want to be a seed of God. I want to be a seed of righteousness. And the mighty hand of grace and mighty hand of power will be a portion. I will be a position. That was what I was talking to him. He was looking at what he had. And I remember that, um, and I remember that rich man. <clears throat> when I remember that rich man, the Lord Jesus asked a question. Uh, go and say, oh, the Lord Jesus business, everything, without Jesus. It's just like you making a foundation of a mighty, or building a castle in the air. Building a very mighty castle in the air. Or building it on top of the ground without foundation. You know what will happen, it can collapse at any time. So by the divine grace of God, as I was talking to him, I was telling him about the Lordship of Jesus of Nazareth. I was telling him to come back to God. Persuade people. Persuade them. Don't, tell, don't do it as if whether they go born again or not. It doesn't matter. No, it matters a lot. Persuade them. Persuade them. Some person so knowing the terror of God will persuade men. We're talking about presenting every man perfect before God. Presenting every man perfect before God. All those people you met in your way, all the people you meet in your office, all those people you meet in your yard, all those people you meet in your living places, all those people you meet around. How do you present them perfect before God? Presenting them perfect before the most holy. Presenting them perfect before God. Giving them the true word of God. It's not you that perfect them. It's the word of God that will perfect them. It's the life you live that will perfect them. Exemplary life of a child of God that you live. We have not seen you presenting every man perfect before God. That God wants his church to be presented as a living sacrifice to him. God wants his church to be presented as a chastity virgin. God wants his church to present without word, rain. Oh, today we're talking about perfection. God wants his church to be perfect. God wants you to be perfect, brother. God wants me to be perfect. God wants us to walk in perfection to the glory of his holy name. God wants us to present the church as a perfect church. You see to that. God wants that thing which is perfect. God wants that thing which is complete. God wants that thing which is. So God wants the church to be presented in perfection. So God wants the church to be presented in holiness. God wants the church to be presented in righteousness. God wants the church to be presented to him a complete church, a good church, a holy church, a righteous church, a perfect church. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. So that is why we're calling upon you right now, my brothers and my sisters. This is a time for us, now that we're still alive. The wailing in hell is so much. The crying in hell is so much. If you can have a good boyfriend, go into fornication, go into drunkenness, go into a party, do all these things, with the, 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 not knowing where you are sending your soul to. The more you do this sin, telling lies, threat, anger, bitterness, the more you are deepening your soul in the deeper part of hell. That is why right now, now is the acceptable time. Now is the hour of salvation. Now is the hour of repentance. Now is the time you can say, let me make peace with my maker. Now is the only time you can say, God, be my king, be my God, and be my Lord, be my father. God wants you perfect. God wants me perfect. You see to that. He wants us to be like him. He's a perfect God. He wants us to come closer to him. He wants us to walk with him. He wants us to live in, with him. He wants to live in us. He wants to control us. He wants to be our everything. 
and that's the mighty father and that is the king of glory and that's the ancient of the days that we're talking about we're talking about the mighty man of valor we're talking about the prince of peace we're talking about the lord jesus christ oh my goodness in the book of psalm chapter 18 verse 32 psalm chapter 18 verse 32 psalm chapter 18 verse 32 psalm 18 verse 32 the bible says it is god that guided me with his strength and make it my ways perfect it's God that guided me with what strength. Oh, I don't have strength to do this. I don't have. You don't need your strength to do that. All you needed is the word of God. And what is the word of God saying? The word of God is saying that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Bible said the strength of the Lord is my strength. The day I, I, the, I discovered that when I came to spiritual things, I don't need my own strength. When I come to the scriptures, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. That when the joy of the Lord come in, I have strength extraordinary. You see to that. You see that and make it my way is perfect. It's God that makes your way perfect. What how can he make your way perfect? He only makes your way perfect when you commit your ways unto his hands. When you say, Lord Jesus, I commit my ways unto your hands. Perfect me, make me perfect, make me to be like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible says, as he was in earth, so are we right now. Walking in perfection, walking as a complete power of God, as a complete instrument in the hands of the Lord. Walking as a perfect example of righteousness, of holiness. Walking as a seed of righteousness, walking as a seed of God. That is what God wants us to be, and that is where he wants us to go. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is what God is saying to us, presenting every man perfect before God. Presenting that man of God, presenting that woman of God, presenting that elder, presenting that deacon. Presenting that deaconess, presenting that boy, that youth choir, that youth leader, presenting the choir mistress, the choir master, presenting everybody perfect before God. What is happening today in the church of Jesus? A lot of rioting, a lot of problems. But when we present ourselves perfect before God, when we choose to be perfect before the Almighty God, that means we have chosen the way of righteousness, we have chosen the way of God, we have chosen the way. God is looking at the heart. Most of the time when you must have done something, God is looking at the heart through which you do it. You see a lot of people, they will come to the poor people. They will give them gifts and they will video them. They will come and bring them in internet, in Facebook. And the whole world will say that they are giving them gifts. What is the intention? The intention is for the church to grow. People will say, ah, I will go to this church. The intention is, ah, this man is a good man of God. Ah, this and this and that. What is your intention, sir? When you have Christ in your life, when you choose to be like Christ, when you choose to be like Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when you say, God, remove every child in me, when you say, God, reveal myself to me, when you say, God, born of that which is not holy, God, born of that which is not righteous, God, born of that which is not pure, which is not clean for in my life. When you ask God to burn off all these things and then make you his own, God will surely do that. You remember what we read in Psalm 18, verse 32. It is God that guided me with strength. Hallelujah. You that have no strength right now, I say, God will guide you with strength. It is God that guide me with strength. That means he's not, he's not saying that God is going to guide me one day with the strength. No, 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 no. You're already guided with the strength. You're already guided with strength. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Psalm 18, verse 32. It is God that guided me with the strength. That means you have been guided already. Child of God, be guided with strength right now. Let that fear disappear. Let that sickness disappear. Let be guided with the strength of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Okay? He said, I make it my way perfect. Is a way perfect before God? Do you know what it means? When your way is pleasing before God. When your way is suiting before God. When your way is is the way of the Bible. When your way is not a hidden way, when your way is not a covering way, when your way is an exemplary way, when your way is an emulating way, the way you handle things, would you encourage other people to handle it the way you do? That is what we're talking about. That is what we're talking. When people will look at you, they say you look like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You may not look at him in appearance, you may not look at him in faith, but you look at Jesus Christ of Nazareth in character, in behavior, in ways, in action. Oh, not that you're fighting. Oh, there are a lot of us. You don't know that God is trying to break you. You are quick to anger, especially when your peers and when their age group are. Anything they talk, you reply back to them. You shout back on them. You do this and you do that. What does that mean? 
I was talking with somebody. He was telling me of a man of God. He met, and two of them were talking. He said the way they, he shouted on the man of God, scolded the man of God. He said the man of God lose control. He said the man of God never knew again that he is a man of God. That the man of God started shouting, started making noise. The man of God, oh, he said. I said, where people? They say yes. There are a lot of people are there. I said, but what did you tell them, the man of God? Do you know he said he's sorry for doing that shouting at the man of God in the public? He said, but he thought that the man would have controlled himself. How far have you gone into controlling yourself? Child of God, how far have you gone into controlling yourself? How far have you gone into controlling yourself? Is this not high time? Is it not time to say, Lord, show me mercy? Is it not time to say, God, show me mercy? I want to be perfect before you. I want to walk in perfection. I want to please the name of the Lord. I don't want to only preach here and end up here in destruction. No, 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 no. God is interested in everything about you. God is interested in everything about me. The mighty hand of grace be upon you and be upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God wants us to be what? Perfect. God wants us to be perfect. Child of God, God wants you to be perfect. God wants me to be perfect. God wants me to walk in perfection. And God wants you to walk in perfection. If that is the will of God that will walk in perfection, then who is stopping you? And then who is stopping me? If God have said it, this is the way, follow it. Why not we follow the way of the Lord? Why are these distractions coming? Where is the distraction coming? Is it in the Facebook? What are you going to tell God that day? If you tell God that your destruction came from Facebook, God will tell you, but so many people preached me through Facebook. That's what God will tell you. So where is the destruction coming from? God wants us to be perfect. There is the will of God. Perfect is being like God. Perfect doesn't mean you live without making a mistake. No, you can make a mistake in your life. Mistake will always come as a human you are. But ability to say this is a mistake, it doesn't mean you don't fall into sin. You see, to that sin, always there. But you pray that you don't fail. Jesus prayed for us and said, oh, Give us grace not to fall into temptation. That is what I'm talking about. God Almighty is there to say, I will help you out of every temptation. The Bible says, out of every temptation, God will give you a way out. Brother, there's a way out from that temptation. Sister, there's a way out of that temptation. There's a way out of that trial. No matter how many years that trial has been, no matter how many years it has been, look at the case of Job. Job was there. He never spoke against God. He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He said that I know that God is trying me. After trying me, I'll be purer than gold. I'll be purer than diamond. Job was comforting himself. Don't go back, child of God. Don't go into the world. Don't go into evil. Don't plant and don't help yourself. A lot of people, because of what they are saying, they are choosing to help themselves. And today they are in danger. Today they are in disaster. Today they are in regret. Today they are in shame. Today they are regretting and say, oh no, had I known. A lot of people have said they are going to marry an unbeliever. Especially our brothers in the Lord, our sisters in the Lord. Brothers will say, of all the people here in the church, of all the people in Pentecostal church, I never see a brother sister to marry. He will go into the world and get a classic lady of his choice. And before you understand it, the lady become a dragon. Before you understand it, the lady begin to show the qualities she is made of. And that is why God is calling on you and calling on me right now and say, Is it not a high time we rise from sleep and slumber? And then Bible said, Don't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. When you want to be perfect before God, and then you are dining with the world, you are eating with the world, you are in that party, you are in that occasion, you are playing the MC. You are doing that. That's, I didn't say that doing MC is bad. It's not bad at all when you do it to the glory of God. Not all these fabricated stories. They will always talk and tell. All this fabricated, fabricated story that people will talk and laugh. All this lie. Somebody was saying that he was going to meet his grandfather. And KK jumped him. KK is a very small tricycle. You know, it's a very small vehicle. Aha. It has three legs. Yeah, two at the back. And then one in the front, very small. He said, and that jammed him. The KK hit him. And then he said, the man came out and gave him 10,000. So he went to his grandmother, father and gave his grandfather uh, 5,000. And told him, do you know this man I gave you, KK jammed me. He said, grandfather started praying for him. If KK will jam you, if KK will hit you, 
and give you 500 uh, 10,000 naira. You say that metre la jam you next time. Metre la be the one that hit you and they say they made this fun, but you don't know you're killing yourself. Why are you telling all this lie? KK didn't jam you, nothing hit you. There was no accident you had, but you're making fun of it. Bible says you're snared by the word of your mouth. Do you know that Bible told us that any man that did not offend in tongue, any man that did not offend in tongue is a perfect man. So look at the will of God for your life. It's God that strengthened me in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. The Bible, the word of God said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. The Bible said, be you therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Be you therefore perfect. Be you in the know. Be you in the knowledge of the world. Be you a gentleman. Be you a man of your world. Be you a man that will stand upon the word of God. Be you a man that lives in holiness. Be you a man that lives in righteousness. Be you a man that have peace of God. Be you a man that stand on your word. Be you a man that God is everything to you. That's what he's talking about. Be you perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. Can you say, God, today I want to walk towards perfection. Presenting every man perfect before God. Bible have clearly told us without holiness no man shall see God no woman shall see God no boy shall see God no nobody can see God no pastor can see God no elder can see God no the king can see God no evangelist can see God no apostle can see God no prophet can see God without holiness the Bible says without holiness no man no power no force no anything can see God without holiness you cannot see him without holiness you cannot see God therefore God the almighty one God, the Holy One, God, the Loving One, God, the Glorious One, is not asking you a question and say, where are thou? Will you walk in perfection? Will you walk together with me? In perfection means choosing the way of the Lord, hating the way of the world, rejecting the way of the world. I say, God, through the word of God, I will live perfectly. Through the direction of the word of God. That means when you're talking, when you're choosing to walk in perfection, it means that you're choosing the way of the Holy Spirit. It means that you've got the Holy Spirit to be your everything. It means that you've walked toward the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit and towards the Holy Spirit. This is what it means. God wants us to walk in perfection. God wants us to walk in righteousness. God wants us to walk in peace. Do you know that the moment you have peace of mind, you have a healthier life. But when your life is not in peace, a lot of sicknesses come in and a lot of things can come in. Yes, you, there are some rules in a small, do you know there are a lot of perfect people who are walking clean with God, but they are very sick in the body. They are eating what they are not supposed to eat. They are not observing the physical law. Just observe the physical law of health right now. You see that, you see yourself not being sick as often as you used to be sick. So that is the way it is. When you are feeding with nonsense, you then become, when you don't have spiritual value of what you are feeding in the spiritual realm, then you begin to suffer from spiritual partial core. And people will look at you and say, what is wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with you, or no devil is afflicting or attacking you, only that you lose your onions. You lose the standard. You don't know what to do again. But if you can today say, Lord God Almighty, I know what the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, be you therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. God, Jesus was talking to them until you only salute and greet your friend. You don't greet your enemies. He said, greet everybody, even as your father in heaven is perfect, so must you be perfect. There are people, there are people you don't greet in your life. You have a list of people you talk to and a list of people you, can, it doesn't, you don't talk to. No, 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 no. It's quite wrong. Be love of God. Talk to everybody. Greet everybody. But you might not be cool, close friends with everybody. Your friends are the people that you are acquainted, the people that knows you too closely and too well. The people you rely, even in friendship, again, there are level and level and level and level and level of association and level of relationship. There is a thing that said, I know him. Remember that Jesus has the 120. After the 120, he still has the 72. After the 72, he has the 12. After the 12, he still have the 3. Have you seen the level? Have you seen the level of relationship? A lot of us will die. I was in the house of a man of God Sunday somewhere and they were asking me to come into their house. Ah! I was already in their house, and what happened? Ah, when I came in there, they were telling me, the man and the wife, they were both literally me, they're living in a flat, they were both literally me to come into their bedroom. Ah, how 
can I do this? How can this be possible? I was very surprised. I began to hear the voice of church members. They left the sitting room. They left the dining room. And they left the children's room. They are in the bedroom of the man of God. They were all sitting down freely. I shone at that. How can that be? There are secret places, sir. There are places of reservation. There are places where everybody will not get into. And they never, they said, no, 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 daddy, that's the way we do. We are open. I said, you're open to human being. Remember back to say that Jesus saw man and looked at man and saw that nothing good is in man. It is the same group of people now that he took into his own personal bedroom or the wife, the son. Whenever the members come, instead of them to talk, uh, the wife will say, I'm in the bedroom, come on. And the members will look and the, the wife, husband will come there and they will stay in the bedroom of the family the house. Uh, they, uh, who, they are living in three bedroom flat. Why going into their personal bedroom? There are places that are reserved for your personal consumption and not whatever. Oh my goodness. Today they are in shambles. Today they are in pain. Today they are in trouble. I know they will be blaming the devil. They will be asking God, where are you? When they were making this loud mistake, that when they were making this loud mistake, they were warned and they didn't listen loudly. Now the mistake is as pronounced something, it is loudly spoken out. Let us not be fools. Let not us in a foolish way. God said, be you perfect. Can you allow your way? What I'm doing is it pleasing to God. What I'm doing is God happy about me. The way I'm doing it, the way I'm dressing, the way I act, the association I move with. You see to that. There's one sister like that, one man of God like that, or one brother like that. You know, so that's association you keep. The association you keep, you see to that. I know one brother that every time you go out of evangelism, you preach the word of God. People were crying, people were repenting. Until one day he met one sister, the lady said, I love what you are doing. Can I be going out with you? And two of them were going out together. And while they were going out together, after that, they will be coming back home. After that, you visit the sister, the sister will visit. And the relationship becomes so severe. People begin to rumor they are not married, but they are so stick to each other. Oh, they are not married. Why are you entangling yourself with this and this and that? If the brother is not in the house of the sister, the sister is in the house of the brother. And the people without are talking, what a relationship, what do they have in common? But that brother is married only that the wife was not in town. This is the problem. And the rumor was that they are, they are the one preaching the gospel and the one destroying the gospel. They are equally preaching. Why are you not giving a perfect example of being a child of God? There are things you do that does not give God praise. Why not avoid them? The people without are looking. Don't believe us are watching. Don't believe us are looking at us. They are saying, let's see who they are. Let's see what they can do. Let's see what is in them. Let's see if they can practicalize what they are preaching. Child of God, now is acceptable time. Tomorrow might be too late. Now is the time that we should preach holiness. God wants you to be perfect. In the book of our Second Corinthians chapter seven verse one. 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 Having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and of the flesh of the flesh. And spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We have a lot of promises. God has promised us a lot of things. He said we should not touch on clean things. We should come to Him. Look at where the story actually started. You know, God wants us to walk in Him. Uh, look at what the Bible said in Second Corinthians chapter six. If we read from verse number seventeen, or oh, if we read from verse number sixteen. Okay, uh, wherefore from verse 17, let's read. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 17 before we come to chapter 7 verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Spirit of the Lord. Look at chapter 7 verse 1 now. Chapter 7 verse 1 now, the Bible says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness 
in the fear of God, having known all these promises that God is interested in all, God wants us to cleanse ourselves, God wants us to be gone out of this, God wants all this thing to be removed out of all, God wants all this thing to be cleansed from all, God wants us to walk in perfection, God wants us to walk in righteousness, God wants us to walk in holiness, God wants us to walk in reality, God wants us to walk in purity, God wants us to walk in cleanliness, God wants us to walk in holiness and in righteousness. And as a result of this, he said, uh, in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter seven, verse one, having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. There are a lot of filthiness, a lot of things that want to dirty you physically. They want that want to dent you spiritually. That is why your Bible says that let the garment be always pure. You are putting on a very clean spiritual garment uh, in righteousness. Your spirit man is very clean. But there are a lot of things that want to dent it. There are a lot of things that want to make it dirty so that it doesn't look real again so that it looks very dirty and then it doesn't flow with you and it doesn't talk God very fine and well. No, 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 no. That's not what Bible is talking. Bible don't want you to live such a life. How dented are you in the spiritual realm? No wonder you're not flowing the way you flow when you pray, when you preach before, when you act before, when you have evangelized before. You don't flow like that again. There are a lot of dents in the spiritual realm. But now is the acceptable time. Now is the hour of repentance. Now is the hour of salvation to say, God, I want to walk in perfection. I want to walk in holiness. I want to walk in righteousness. I want to walk closely with you in the you, within you, and round about you. It is the will of God for us to live. Therefore, the Bible said, I'm perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That means you choose to live a holy life and you still have the fear of God in you. Just like Joseph said, I can I do this evil against my Lord. I'm not going to do this evil. I'm not going to do it this way. What is many or this thing that is luring men and luring the whole world into evil. Unrighteous many, money will be given to somebody, the person will tell lies. And this and this and this will happen. No, 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 no. Let's base the word of God. Let's base on the word of God. Let's preach the word of God. Let's preach the word of truth. Let's preach the word of life. Let's perfect holiness. When you dress, you dress holily. When you talk, you talk holily. When you are moving on the road, the group you are moving with, the association you are moving with, you move holily. There was a day I went to preach the word of God. I want to go and preach to musicians. The musician, uh, uh, musical part, uh, association. The musicians in the town invited me to come and preach the word of God. And I told one man of God, it's also my son in the Lord. He said, okay, I would like to go with you. I would like to go with you. I said, as I'm going to musicians, I want to be very, very careful. He said, yes. I said, yes, I want to be very, 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 very careful. My speech, my action, my behavior. He said, okay, he's going to go with me. By the time I went to his house, he put on traditional cards. Put on the traditional, my people traditional dread. He have to have his uh, uh, staff, and then um, the way he dressed put me off. I said, if you're going for occasion, do that would be better. If you're going for other type of one, want to go and win souls. The people who are going to pre pre preach to, they are radicals, they are worldly. These are, they are from different denominations, sir. The, when they see you, the way you're dressing, this is how most of them would dress and fly off their dresses, sir. And then there are a limit to what we are. Let's dress very well. Let's be all, but it's important. I can be all things to all men. Let's dress fine. Let's be, not that the way he was dressing was a simple way, but I was particularly learned to dress clean and neat and simple in attire. Now they will look at me and they are not going to begin to find fault and things like that. Do you know there are a lot of others will appear on the altar? One day a man of God was standing on the altar to preach. I was looking at him. His church members were looking at him. He was wearing a very fine less. Nothing is wrong in you wearing a less. But there was a lot of holes in the less. Everything he was wearing inside was being seen. The singlet he was wearing, the hand of the singlet, the opening of the singlet, to his belly side, it was very very, very transparent, very, very, very open like that. And then he wore it and mounted the altar of the living God. And people were distracted. People were no more looking at him. People were looking and no more listening to the word of God. They were all looking at the hole. They were all looking at the whiteness of the singlet. How white is it? How brownish it is? What is the color of this? Or what is that, old child of God? So many years ago, that should be around 1986. Yes, far back as 1986, when the worldliness had not started. By the time he started, a young preacher lady who was powerfully used
used of the Lord in those days. She was invited for a program. And as she was in that program, she came in, what she was wearing, oh my goodness, she was wearing some tiny this and she was preaching, the, 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 the bra, the, 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 the part of the bra was coming out, she would just do like this and put it back again and she was talking to big audience, audience of young men, audience of young women, audience of mothers, audience of fathers and that was what was, she was very busy adjusting her bra, she was very busy adjusting her bra and that was what distracted everybody from what she was preaching. Child of God, what am I trying to say? May the devil not use us in any form to distract people. Rather, let Jesus be the attraction center. May we preach this word of God. So many people were asking me, Daddy, why are you not in Zoom? Why are you not in Zoom? Why are you not in Zoom? Zoom is not bad. Zoom is very, very good. I can afford it. But uh, it's true, it is technical. You don't operate it alone. One, two person have to help you operate it. But I see a lot of things in Zoom. Uh -huh. People are discussing in Zoom, like you're preaching. A lot of women will come out there listening to the word only with their bra. Some will come and wear whatever. Some men will be there barefooted, you know, bare body. They will be listening to the word and this and that. Some will carry their children, feed, be feeding their children, and they will be listening. Oh, a lot of things is happening in Zoom, and that puts me off. I need their concentration in whatever thing I'm doing. I need their concentration to preach the word of God. So what are we trying to say, children of God? God wants you to walk in perfection. Can you conclude today? Can you tell yourself today, I am right, I'm doing it better, all I'm doing before God, I'm getting it right? Can you say, God, I'm getting it right, or you're not getting it right? This is time for you to judge yourself. The Bible says judge yourself so that you will not be judged. I want to judge myself, Lord. I want to walk towards perfection. I am not perfect. The Bible said in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. 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 And the Bible said, I'm being not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Don't be like this world. Don't be changed to the people of the world. A lot of things are happening. A lot of events are coming up. I'm being not conformed to this world. But be you therefore, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is what the Bible is talking here right now. Because God wants us to walk, be perfect and walk in perfection and then walk with him, walk with a clean heart, not a dent heart, a righteous heart, a pure heart. Because God wants us to walk in purity, because God wants us to walk in pure holiness, or God wants us to walk in renewing of our mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because of the way the world is going, because of the way the evils are happening here on earth, unless your heart is transformed, beloved, unless your heart is transformed, if your heart is no more transformed, it can no more, it can no more say, this is the will of God. Look at what the Bible says, I'm being not conformed to this world. Don't look like this world in their action. Don't look like this world in their speech, in their dressing. There are a lot of nonsense postings. And in my group, people who post nonsense, I'll call them. Now, the person may be talking about, there was one, the lady was actually speaking the word of God, but she was handless in her dressing. In, uh, in this thing. You can see her parts of the body exposed and say, what are you, are we watching pornography pictures here? This, she can say something that is right, but her picture have condemned her. So whenever you're posting anything, I told them, whenever you're posting anything in this group, check the dressing, check the word, check how it will edify that man. Supposing you, as a married woman, as a married man, you can post this thing. What are the younger ones that are not yet married? What do you think? What of that young man? What of that young lady? What are you trying to pray? What are you trying to put in them? God wants us to live in every goodness of each. The Bible says, I'm being all conformed to this world, but be you transformed. When you're transformed, you'll be renewed. What will renew you is the word of God. This is what the Bible said about the situation. This is what the Bible said about my situation. The Bible said that you'll be renewed of your mind. That you may prove what is that good. It's only when you're renewed you will know what is good. You know the genuine man of God. You know the rich out of God from the evil child of God from the Yahoo Yahoo pastor. And acceptable. You will know what God wants you to do. You will know what is acceptable. It's only when you renew yourself with the word of God. Daily reading the word. Read the word daily. Most of people only depend on the daily whatever. 
They only depend on the daily readings, uh, the word of God. Go to God personally, read your Bible personally. Are you hearing me? Go to God personally and read the word of God personally. Read the word of God by yourself. Uh, are you hearing me? I'm not condemning all the daily posts. Uh, it's okay. But when they're after posting, after posting, the person has been inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's why the person sent you that daily, whatever. Don't depend on that alone. Go to God alone. Go to God again. The Bible says, by the renewing of your mind, uh, that you may prove what is that good uh, and acceptable and perfect will of God. You cannot know the perfect will of God when you don't know the word of God. You cannot know the will of God when you are not in prayer. So when you are not a spiritual man, when you are not in prayer, when you don't seek God and seek the face of the Lord. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow might be too late. Now is the time for you to say, God, I want to walk in perfection. I want to walk in holiness. I want to walk in righteousness. And the mighty hand of God will help you and help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Having told you this, this is a foundational message we have made by the divine grace of God. We are going to continue this message by Sunday again. We are going to continue this message by Sunday. The mighty hand of grace will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The mighty power of Christ will help us so that we're going to continue this message by next Sunday. God wants us to walk in perfection. There are reasons why He wants you to walk in perfection. We're going to know those reasons. How I will help you to walk in perfection and how are you going to walk in perfection? By next Sunday, we'll continue this. God will keep you and bless you. Let me rush out for another program we have somewhere right now. God will keep you and bless you. God wants you to walk in perfection. Child of God, always bear that God in mind that God doesn't take 70%. He has nothing to do with 80%, even 90%. 90% and 99% he wants you to walk perfection. Is he who have pronounced holy that is holy. How? When you God will pronounce you holy when you live according to the word of God. When your heart has been zero to nothing, only Christ alone will fill your heart. When you have part of the world, part of your village, part of your uh, stubbornness, part of everything in you, and you feel you can worship God, no, God will not accept that. God is looking totality of you. God is looking at the who you. God wants you to be his own child. And let the name of Christ be glorified forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will keep you and bless you. Child of God, can you tell him, I want to walk in perfection? If that is your desire, it's possible. But for you to walk in perfection, you must be born again. You must receive Jesus Christ as Nazareth as your Lord and Savior. If that is what you want to be right now, you want to receive him as Lord and Savior, now is the hour. Now is the opportunity. Shall we begin to pray? Shall Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I am a sinner. Come into my life, O oh Lord. Give me grace to be your child. I receive you right now into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Give me grace to be yours forevermore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Father, I pray for him. I pray for her who have just received Jesus as Lord and Savior that the mighty hand of grace come upon you. Peace of God come upon you. Mighty hand of God come upon you. May your sins be forgiven. Grace to be a holy child of God be given to you. From now onward, may you turn into purity and holiness and live a holy, pure, clean, sanctified, and a dedicated life. And let the name of Christ alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you and keep you. For you, brother, for you, sister, that want to walk in perfection, I ask for spiritual grace upon your head. I ask for spiritual grace upon your life. May God give you that grace. May God help you, give you the grace to live a holy and a clean and a pure and a sanctified life in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, let your rugged way be. May God reveal yourself to you. Every evil way, every negative way, every contrary way, be gone and be gone out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of purity, holiness, and righteousness come forth to you. This week, we have entered. God will see you through. God will bless you. God will favor you. You will see it flow into it with joy, with peace and understanding. That which has been the desire of your heart shall be granted you this week. And God of heaven and earth will give you a way out in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going out and you are coming in shall be blessed of the Lord. You are going out and you are coming in shall be blessed and favored of God. And God's goodness will be your portion. You will read and read with understanding. You go out and make profit and make money. My money. You will go out and be blessed and favored of the Lord. Healing is your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace in your marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace among your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that stubborn child turn and change 
henceforth in Jesus' name. Let the glory of God come your way as the peace of God rule over your life. Christ be glorified and magnified forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name we we'll pray. God will keep you and bless you. Everything you desire, that has rent is made up. May God meet you. You will never go homeless in Jesus' name. You will never go homeless in Jesus' name. You will never go homeless in Jesus' name. God will always make a way that seems to be no way. That which look impossible with men, let it be possible with God right now. And then let it be possible with you right now. May a way be given to you. May a solution be given to you. May a miracle be given to you. And let Christ then be honored. For unto the Lord be our glory. Thank you, Lord, for being our Father. Thank you for being the King and God. Thank you for being the comfort and consolation. Solution. Thank you for being everything to us. To you alone be other glory as we praise and bless, as we worship and honor you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Keep you, protect and preserve you. And we meet again. Tomorrow evening, we're going to meet again and speak the word of God. Word of life and word of power. And Christ shall be glorified in Jesus' name. God bless you. And the keeper of Israel keep you more in Jesus' name. Amen. It's well with you. God the keeper keep you, bless you, favor you in Jesus' name. Amen. And over and over.